Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Bitcoin and where it's heading next. So the last couple of days have been pretty brutal. This is probably in no small part due to what's going on in the Middle East with Israel, Hezbollah, and Iran. Now, I am not going to pretend to know what's going to happen with that situation, but certainly an expansion of conflict in the Middle East is something that's always going to scare markets, and Bitcoin here is no different. But in this video, I want to focus more on where is Bitcoin in a broader context. I want to talk about some of our models, what they're seeing, and what they suggest might be next for Bitcoin. So what I want to start is with our long-term upside downside potential indicator, or UDPI. This is a risk model that we have. Higher values, higher risk. Lower values, lower risk. And the model cares about moves that play out over months to multiple months. So longer term in its focus. It's not as concerned about moves that play out in the short term, think days to weeks. So we can see here is that as we went into the all time high, we got pretty extended on the long term UDPI getting all the way up almost to 2.5. And at the time I was talking about this where you don't see those levels very often on the long term UDPI for Bitcoin. And it really only happens when you're going towards some big bull off top or some intermediate big notable top. And at the time I was saying that I would not be surprised if this time would again be something, at least an intermediate peak and that we were getting into pretty dangerous territory there. Now, indeed, we now have been correcting and cooling off for quite a while, really ever since then, this entire year, just kind of more or less going sideways, slightly down. Now risk has cooled off as a result of that, but it's not back down in these deep value territory yet. It's not all the way back down at, you know, negative four, negative 3.8, negative 3.2, like we saw back through here. This was kind of the blindly buy Bitcoin and don't worry about it phase. Now we're in a more difficult phase. And that's the thing is that this could be this intermediate type of peak like we've seen in the past in a broader bull market. Market needs to cool off, maybe something like 2019, a long cool off before we ultimately go on the big bull run. But certainly this is not early cycle anymore. We are now in the phase where we're hoping to get a big next rally to really cap off a bull run, but certainly the best opportunities are behind us. And that's, I think, where we're sitting right now, that it looks like recession fears are lessening, though certainly plenty of people on crypto Twitter will be telling you opposite of that. But it is something that stands out as a potential concern that could really derail a continuation of the bull market. Then, of course, also things like the possibility of a large scale conflict in the Middle East could also create a wide number of issues that's really hard to predict how the Bitcoin market would react. So there are always going to be those things out there, those things to cause fear and concern. But really, I think what I'm more focused on right now is can we get to that second phase? It's pretty clear. It's pretty obvious. We're already well into the cycle. And now the question is, can it continue and give us that final leg up? And if that happens, will that then coincide again with risk getting up to these really high levels, marking that peak? Certainly, if we see that, I will be heading for the exit personally. So not financial advice, you should do what you see best and interpret these data as you will. That's one of the things I'm looking for. That we're at a relatively low risk period right now, especially if we are still in a bull market, but we're not at deep value zones like we've been in at those very obvious, very clear, just blindly buy Bitcoin and don't worry about it phases. Now is a little bit more tricky. So something else that also can tell us about where we are right now that I also think suggests a tricky point of where Bitcoin is right now is the momentum bias indicator or MBI. So this model is looking at is the overall momentum in the Bitcoin market. Is it biased to the upside or biased to the downside? And you'll see this very telltale types of behavior on this metric based on where we are in the market cycle. So when you're in a bull market, you're just in the green, in the green, in the green, very brief potential dips into the red, but more or less just staying in the green the entire time. Then you might have some big blow off top which then leads to the bear market, which is then categorized as basically the opposite. A lot of red, a lot of red, tiny blips up into the green, but basically just red all the way throughout. But then you go into this interesting behavior like this, this alternating between positive and negative, kind of oscillating around zero. And that's that transition out of a bear market into a bull market. You'll see it happen in every single cycle that Bitcoin has had so far. Now, the thing that's interesting about what's happening recently, and I think a little bit concerning, 
is that I've been in borderline bear market behavior on this metric really ever since this first failed breakup, actually really all the way back here in May, and especially here in July, that we've been in somewhat of a mini bear market this entire time. Something sort of like we saw here in 2019. Now in 2019 is a little bit more short-lived. We had a more sustained rally here that's got us up into the green more definitively before the March 2020 crash, but it isn't too dissimilar from that. And so that's the thing that I'm, I'm watching here is that if, like we were just seeing here on the long-term UPI, this was a mid-cycle top that we saw over here at the all-time high at 73, 74K, then maybe this is something like we saw in 2019. And really it's not time to get too excited yet until at the very least we start seeing maybe some oscillation again here, which could then build into that next leg up like we saw in the last cycle. Now the March 2020 crash is a bit of an anomaly, so I'm not really taking that all too seriously. I think what you can kind of look at this is going from a mini bear market into again, this kind of oscillation around zero, kind of this transition out of that mini bear market into a new potential bull run, which then took off. And so maybe that's what's gonna happen again. We had kind of this transition out of the bear market that ultimately got us up to the all time high, maybe even a bit of a mini bull market here, that then got delayed, got stopped, now a kind of a mini bear market that ultimately might lead into something more definitive. And I'd really, again, like to stay at oscillation before getting too excited. So what I wouldn't like to see here is just getting rejected again from these levels going back down into the red. That means that this bear market is not over yet and we're gonna probably see more to come. And it really becomes then more questionable, can we really call it a mini bear market? Or is this just something like we've seen in the past that could lead in, into you know, even more pain down the road? So I think Bitcoin's at a really crucial moment on this metric right now. I'd really like to see continuation to the upside get us back into the higher green here to think that we're gonna to transition to this oscillation. Right now, it's not looking so great. And especially with these negative catalysts that are happening, it's not looking like the situation is all that conducive right now for just a rip back up to the upside. Now things can change on a dime in the crypto space, but right now it's not looking great. And if that's what we end up seeing, then I think we're gonna potentially see more pain to come if that happens. Okay. So the final model I want to talk about here is the DXY base fair value. So that's this red line here. And basically what this is doing is it's looking at the DXY, which is basically the strength of the dollar relative to a basket of other fiat currencies. And you're just seeing is Bitcoin, you know, we're basically just looking is Bitcoin above that fair value based on what the dollar has been doing, or is it below the fair value based on what the dollar has been doing? And this metric has been very useful to identify when Bitcoin is very undervalued, kind of leading the way up, and then Bitcoin kind of catches up to its fair value. But then also it's getting overextended, this kind of unsustainable points that tend to then revert back down to that fair value. Or for example, here in 2020, really leading the way into that big bull run, but then showing we're getting ahead of ourselves here, and then again over here in late 2021, and then down, down, down we went. But then all the way, just zooming in here, all the way from late 2022 through 2023, this whole point we were undervalued. And this is another reason back then why I was so optimistic and bullish because Bitcoin was undervalued. Just one more data point saying blindly buying Bitcoin here made a lot of sense. We then kind of started trading blows with the fair value, getting above it, then below it. And then we've been, we were above it for a long time, ever since the all time high. And I was talking about this consistently. And until we got back below fair value, I wasn't super confident that Bitcoin could just continue off to the upside. Indeed, that's what we've seen. It has not been able to. But importantly, we've now flipped. The DXY base fair value is now higher than the price. And I think that is that first step that we need to see that continuation to the upside. So it doesn't need to play out immediately. You can have long periods where Bitcoin is undervalued or kind of just more or less going sideways. And so I don't think that would have to play out immediately. But that is one point in the favor of the bulls. So if we're just gonna wrap all this up and kind of what my thinking is, I still think there's a pretty good chance that we are in that kind of uh, mid-cycle cool down phase, like 2019, like the middle of 2013, where we had that initial run up, now we need to cool off, and that more upside is on the horizon. I think that is a reasonable outlook. But importantly, it is much harder to be as confident in that now as it was back here. Back through here, it was felt pretty darn good to just say, I think Bitcoin is going higher from here. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Kind of as, as I've been talking about, the blindly buy Bitcoin phase. And I was very vocally bullish throughout this whole point. Now we're in the difficult point of the cycle. 
where I think there's evidence that suggests that, yeah, this does seem plausible. This does seem like a pretty reasonable hypothesis that we are in this kind of mid-cycle lull before a next move up. But we can't rule out those negatives. We can't rule out the possibility that, for example, we're actually at the beginning of maybe a new uh, bear market here, and that Bitcoin is not going to be able to regain this positive momentum bias, and down, down, down we go. We don't really know at this point. Now, I do think if we do go into a bear market, I would suspect it's not something that's internal to crypto that's likely to cause it. Another way of putting it is that in the past, a lot of times when we get these bear markets, it's because we got to a point where things just got so unsustainable to the upside. You know, we got so far away from fair value, for example, that we just had to kind of have price come off and that you're just not going to have enough people being able to, enough demand stepping in to outweigh the people who are trying to exit, especially cash in on profits they might have been sitting on if they bought in at lower prices. And you just end up then seeing that kind of cascade till finally you find a place where the demand is gonna outstrip that supply that's just trying to get out of the market. Now, I don't think we got that overextended in this run up here where that has to happen. And so I really do think it's more likely to be some kind of external factor that would cause a end to this cycle and for us to go into a bear market. Something like a recession, Something like something calamitous happening in the Middle East that is prolonged and has really detrimental effects on markets. Those kind of things could potentially have those kind of effects. But I don't think it's anything internal to crypto. And that's where right now, that's why I'm not really just going to be flipping max bearish or really worrying about it. I haven't seen anything really kind of structurally within the crypto market that suggests to me that we have to just go way lower right now. Certainly could go lower, but I don't think we necessarily have to go way lower. It has to be some kind of external shock that would lead us there. But again, that's what makes this difficult. We're not in the easy part of the cycle anymore. So there very well might still be a nice amount of upside left, but there's no denying we've already seen a lot of upside already. This is no longer early. I think this is at best mid cycle. So not financial advice. You should make your own opinion of these data, but that is just what I'm thinking about right now when I look at it. So if you like the content or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X. A lot of updates with our models and more over there. And you go to our website, PlurityDigital.io to see live data from our models and more.